All right, we're joined here by Timbers head coach Phil Neville. Phil, thanks for joining us. If you can start us off with just your opening thoughts on today's match. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a brilliant game of football. A great advertisement for uh, uh, MLS. I think there was two teams going, you know, with 11 players on the pitch with great quality. Uh, I mean, you can you can talk about the disappointments with decisions. Uh, I think I think in the MLS we've got to live with that. Uh, uh, I think all managers have the same frustrations, and uh, you know I think over the last two or three weeks, I think they say that decisions over a course of a season uh, evens themselves out, and I just hope that maybe I was run into next season as well in terms of the bad luck we feel as if we've had. Uh, no way was it a red card. Uh, it was a foul, yeah, but no way was it a red card. There was Claudio Bravo was back in there. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just I was just really pleased with the determination. I think we spoke three weeks ago about mentality. I think we showed a mentality today. I think there's a clear identity forming it with our mentality, uh, and uh, super proud with with the way that they played. And I think I think in Evander, I think we've got the best player in the in the conference at this moment in, moment in time. He's playing he's playing incredibly well, and uh, you know I think uh, really pleased. Thank you. We'll open up to questions. Phil, you mentioned the frustration with decisions um, that coaches share among the league. Aside from the red card, it just felt like a really physical, chippy game. Um, some calls kind of, not to get you in trouble at all, but just yeah. didn't seem very consistent. Well, I think the first thing to say is, is that, that I think as managers, we don't want anyone sent off. You know, I think I think we want, we want 11 players on the field. We feel today as if it had been 11 v 11, we'd had a good chance of winning the game. Uh, I think what happens is, is when you feel as if you've you've been hard done by or a decision's gone against you, you then start thinking about uh, consistency, you know. I, and like I say, I, I I speak that I don't want any player sent off, but Muriel was consistently fouling, and and like I say, like when I played football, they, them fouls probably weren't even fouls, but but nowadays we're fouling, we're yellow carding. We, we I think Bogus, Sivander, and Mora got fouled for kicking the ball away, which then puts those players under pressure. Bogus then makes a foul after he's got a yellow card, and you think, you know, you think, you know, consistency. Uh, and I say I don't want anyone sent off, but we're just looking for consistency. That's I think that's what we've got to be striving for. And I think as a, I think as a, as a, you know, thinking about the refs are obviously a little bit rusty, which is understandable. Uh, they they need help from everybody. Uh, we, we we have VAR in this in this league, but it, it seems it seems like you know it seems like it doesn't get used well enough. It seems like the cameras aren't good enough to be to help. You know we think about the penalty in Vancouver. We think about decisions last week when we should have had a clear penalty for a handball. Uh, it just just VAR just doesn't seem to be working uh, for me. And, and like I said, this is not a criticism. This is where we, we want this league to be the best in the world. And I think the frustrations that we have is the same frustrations that the referees have, is the same uh, frustrations that the players have. You see that at the end, LAFC, they had maybe 10, 12 players surrounding the referee. That That's that's because of frustration, because both teams want to win. And, and, and that's a good thing, but it's also a sign that we need to keep investing in referees, giving them, giving them better... You know, uh, circumstances or, or equipment to perform their jobs better. And uh, you know, I, 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 when I came into management, I, I thought I'm not going to be that manager that comes in the press conferences and blames referees because I, I always think you look at yourself in the mirror. The, the ball over the top was on side. I just felt as if it was not a red card. Now it was. Okay, well then we need consistency for the rest of the game. So that, I think that's that's probably a balanced answer. It hopefully, won't get me in trouble. <laughs> Uh, hey, Coach, I want to talk about your decisions with substitutions. Uh, for the three, I think the last three matches, there's been a substitution at half. And then with this red card situation, the way you shifted uh, Chara to the back, brought on Espria, brought on Moreno, I would just kind of like to hear your thoughts about creating a defensive structure that could maintain for the second half yeah. while also bringing on attackers. Yeah, well, I think... I think uh, Ayala was gassed at halftime, so uh, so that was uh, that was the reason. Last week in uh, Kansas City, it was we were three 0 down. Somebody so, somebody had to take the one for the team, and, and a couple did. Mosquera came off because he was at a tight calf. Uh, Jonathan, when we we put Jonathan to centre forward, uh, 
he was gassed, he, he, he was struggling on the left hand side because they was pinning him back so we, we wanted to freshen up in the wide areas Anthony's got a slight strain of his medial ligament so so we had to bring him off Diego Traura going to right back was, was about experience uh, was about experience and when, you, when you're ten, ten, when you go down to 10 men the last player I wanted to take off was Mora but he was on a yellow card uh, and, and I couldn't see anyone else in the team. You want to keep your DPs on the field. Uh, and then I thought with Dairon and Santi would freshen up in wide areas and maybe counter-attack, but we found it difficult to maintain possession. And uh, I thought in the last, like, I thought from going to 10 men, it was probably our best defensive performance of the season in terms of it was a team that was never going to get beat. And it was a team that filled every, every hole, everyone covered for each other. And that mentality is probably what would have been better in the Philadelphia game as well, if you know what I mean. So, so we're learning every single game. The substitutions is, is that we've got that many options on the bench is that we've got good options and, and you know I've got to say I, I think Williamson not getting on today was was, was really tough as a decision because uh, I think it was a game where he could have prospered in but unfortunately we, 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 we needed another couple of subs and we didn't have them. Coach Guillermo with Univision Portland, um, can you talk about Felipe a little bit more? He's been on the tear ever since he came, came back just scoring goals and doing whatever wherever needs to be done to uh, get the team on track to the scoring sheet. Yeah, he's making the team play better. He's he's making the team play better. He's scoring three and three. The team like him in the team. I like him in the team. He's, he's a threat. Uh, Evander has a really good relationship with him. So we've got competition now for places in the nine position. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be really good, that one. And then, Coach, could you talk to us about the partnership between uh, Diego Chara and David Ayala? Yeah, I mean, David was uh, played well last week. Uh, it was a big game to come into today. We have to keep putting him out there. We have to see what he's got, and he's got he's got something. Uh, I just felt I looked up 41 minutes, and he was really blowing. And I think the things with the moments in substitutions, you can't you can't wait. You've got to like half time is almost like a free substitution. It doesn't count as a moment. So we had to rather than go out and play an extra five minutes, putting in a player on for, that's fresh at half time meant we didn't waste the moments. And uh, the substitution that we had to make when there was a sending off. It, it killed us because we lost a moment. Uh, David is a good player. We, we need to keep building him. He needs to keep fitter. He's coming back from an ACL. He's he's played 55 minutes of football in in maximum in the, in the last 12 months. So he's going to take time, but he's. I, I think we really believe in him. Phil, you've you've talked quite a bit about Evander's leadership role and how he's taken that on his shoulders. But can can you expand a little bit on just how effective he's been on the pitch and, and the way that he's creating for his teammates as well. It, it really does seem like him and Felipe are, are really kind of playing off of each other and a lot of that's based on him creating. I think I think the difference between good players and really good players is that really good players make others around him look better look make others around them look better. And Evander does that. You think about the games where, where we've been successful is when he's grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck and then everyone else gets comfort from him. And I think that's a sign of a leader. And that's why I gave him the captaincy last week is because I thought without without being sort of like uh, shouting and, and uh, we say shouting and bawling in England, like shouting and screaming, uh, he, he does his actions by his body languages, by his efforts, by his, uh, his control on the play. And it gives everybody else real, real composure around him. And uh, like I say, I don't, I don't see a better number ten in either conference in this moment in time than Evander. That, that's how highly I rate him. And there's some good number tens in these in these conferences. We'll do one last question. Phil, you mentioned the red card, but I'm wondering if you could talk about Maxime's kind of play overall in that first half. It seemed like he got the crowd really into it a few times. He was kind of jawing back and forth, but he had some impressive saves as well. He did. It was a uh, Max showing about Kripal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was his. It was his big game. It was. It was uh, LAFC. Uh, it's his team. It's a team that he was successful with. A team that helped him back from probably the lowest moment when he had that horrific injury in the final. So he has a lot of lot of. Uh, he has a lot of sort of like emotion and passion for for that football club. And and today he showed that he he, he was desperate to win. You know, I thought there was a great moment in the first half when he went toe to toe with one of those players. I think there was a scuffle in the box and he he didn't back down. And I thought that sent a message to our team, even though he probably loves LAFC, is that he's a Portland Timber. His words in the media this week have been really, really passionate about this city. Uh, and uh, he's a big player for us. For us to be successful, he has to perform at the top level. And... Uh, and we're lucky we've got great goalkeepers, uh, four great goalkeepers, and Pantamis will have to play well next week in Columbus. Thank you, Phil. We'll wrap it there.